The management of Garden Depot prepared the following summary of its budgeted cash flows for the coming year. Notice we have total cash receipts for each quarter and total cash disbursements. We're told the company's beginning cash balance will be $20,000. Notice we'll pick this up at the beginning of both the first quarter and it's our beginning balance for the year. We're told the company requires minimum cash balance of $10,000 and may borrow any amount needed from a local bank at a quarterly interest rate of 3%. The company may borrow any amount at the beginning of the quarter and it repays its loan or any part of its loans at the end of any quarter. Interest payments are due on any principal at the time it's repaid. Let's go ahead and prepare the cash budget for the upcoming year, assuming that interest is not compounded. Let's begin by picking up our cash receipts for each quarter that we're given. Those are for the first, second, third, and fourth quarters. Next, let's pick up our cash disbursements. And again, we're giving those for the first, second, third, and fourth quarters. Now we can move through our cash budget, taking each quarter at a time. Let's begin with the first quarter. We began with $20,000 cash budget and collected $180,000 from customers. So the total cash we have available is $200,000. Once we subtract our disbursements, we find we have a $60,000 deficiency which means we're going to need to borrow money. In fact, we'll borrow $70,000 because we're going to need to cover our $60,000 deficit and we wanted to have $10,000 in cash on hand at the end of the quarter. So our total financing needs are $70,000 and our ending cash balance then is $10,000. The $10,000 ending cash balance is our beginning cash balance for the second quarter. Since we have cash collections of $330,000, our total cash available is $340,000. With disbursements of $230,000, we're left with $110,000 in cash on hand at the end of the second quarter, which means we can pay back the money we borrowed. So we'll repay $70,000 in debt, and we'll also pay $4,200 in interest. This is the $70,000 that we borrowed at the beginning of the first quarter times 3% and the $70,000 that's outstanding during the second quarter at 3%. So in other words, $70,000 times 3% interest per quarter times two quarters. That gives us our $4,200. Our total financing cash flows, then it's an outflow of $74,200. When we subtract this from the $110,000 we have available, it gives us a remaining cash balance of $35,800. Again, our ending balance for the second quarter is our beginning balance for the third quarter. And we add to that $35,800 the $210,000 we collected from customers, and we have $245,800 available. Once we disperse or pay $220,000, we are left with $25,800. Since we have excess cash, we don't need to borrow money. And since we don't owe any, there are no repayments. So our financing cash flows for the third quarter are zero, which means our ending third quarter balance is $25,800, which again is our opening balance for the fourth quarter. We'll add to that our cash collections of $230,000, to give us $255,800 of cash available. We make disbursements of $40,000, leaving us with $15,800. Again, we don't need to borrow, and there's no repayment, so our financing cash flows are zero, meaning we end the fourth quarter with a cash balance of $15,800. Let's go ahead and total up our activities for the year. Our total cash collections from customers for the year were 950000 which meant we had 970000 available to cover our disbursements. The year total for disbursements is 950000 which means our excess cash is $20,000. Notice once we total across our borrowings and our repayments, those will equal each other, but we also had $4,200 we paid in interest for the year. So for the year, our total financing cash flows was a negative 4,200. When we add this to the 20,000 cash available, 
we end up with our 15,800 in ending cash, which is what we also found for the end of the fourth quarter.